All right, all right. What's up? Billy Carson here, a.k.a. Forbidden Knowledge. Got a big talk tonight. It's going to be a good podcast. I haven't done a rant in a while just because I've been so busy. I see everybody filling up the chat. What's up? Mad Dog, Alfonso, Love Seas, Netta, Third Eye Tribe, Crystal Simpson Jones. All right. What's going on? P.L. Shabbat, Harbat. Metatron, Rael, Sugar Daddy. Hey, guys, it's going to be a live one tonight. Make sure you share this link. Make sure you please click the like button. Let's catch the algorithm. And go ahead and please, please, please share this link. Share this video with somebody. I'm going to go in tonight. <laughs> going to snap on this, uh, you know, this this whole thing, man. This, <laughs> this, this subject that's been brewing and stewing and going on and on and on. Uh, for the last few months here, actually since October, right? Because I remember when the first situation happened with Israel and Palestine, I was actually in Egypt, which is kind of nearby. Uh, and so, uh, of course, a lot of people were texting me and contacting me and everyone else in our group. We had, between the two tours, we had 140 people that we took on a pr private VIP tour of Egypt. And a lot of people were very concerned, but we were perfectly safe because we're not, we're in Africa. We're not even in uh, the Middle East. We're in Africa and we're probably about maybe 10 to 15 hours drive from the border itself. Then you got to get into the action. So uh, you got to get across Mount Sinai, you know, so we're perfectly safe. I mean, there's no value in blowing up, you know, ancient temples in the middle of the Sahara Desert. <laughs> so we... <laughs> There's no, nobody's coming there, and Egypt is not going to get involved in this conflict, uh, even, even though right now there is a ceasefire, but Egypt is definitely not getting in, involved. Egypt right now is rising off of the tourism dollar, and they don't want that dollar to stop. They're making a lot of improvements and upgrades to the country, uh, and so it's in their best interest uh, to uh, just stay out of it, which is what they're going to do. And the president of Egypt himself is not a zealot. He's not a religious zealot, so he's not going to be like rallying up all the Arab countries together and let's go after Israel. It's just not going to happen. So there's nothing going on in Egypt. Egypt is still a great place to go. As a matter of fact, I'm doing another tour there coming up very soon. And the link is in the caption of this video if you want to go on my 12-day Egypt tour. But like I said before, make sure you click the link. Make sure you share the video. All right. Click the like button. Um I call this video the promised scam, okay? The promised, not the promised land, the promised scam. Because that's what we're really talking about here, a promised scam. At the end of the day, we're talking about men, okay? We're talking about men who make their own rules and laws and then claim, and I do mean claim, they were written by God. OK. And what's really amazing is <laughs> the number, the sheer numbers of adults that fall for these fairy tales. It's actually a little horrifying. It's really a little horrifying. So, you know, this thing, I mean, I, if you go back on Forbidden Knowledge Instagram account and Forbidden Knowledge Facebook page going back years. Every so many years, there's another conflict, right? Israel's attacking Palestine. Palestine's trying to respond, but they really don't have a lot of means. Hamas is trying to, you know, shake some things up and, you know, make some terror attacks and make some threats and so forth. And they're going back and forth. A few people get blown up here and there. So this is nothing new. This has been going on for a very long time. I mean, all the way back, really, for a couple hundred years. And um, what is the real story behind all of this? <laughs> what is going on that's creating this kind of idiotic behavior by human beings on this planet in the 21st century? In the 21st century, no less, we got people fighting over fairy tales. <laughs> this is why the aliens don't talk to us. They're step back looking at this. They're saying these people are literally slaughtering each other and killing each other's babies in the streets because of a fairy tale that was written by a human being, a man, a flesh and blood man, 
with red blood in his veins, puts his pants on one leg at a time, just like you and me. No God creator of the universe wrote any of this stuff. Well documented, by the way, because they tell you who wrote the text. They never said God wrote this. They tell you the name of the person that supposedly wrote the text. Then it all was inspired by God. Well, I can inspire myself to, to do anything I want. I can inspire myself to pick up this glass. And guess what? The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a prophecy. I'm going to drink the water. Prophecy fulfilled. <laughs> Come on, man. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Anytime you write text, hundreds of years, sometimes thousands of years after events have happened, you can create prophecies, you can create promised land, you can create chosen people. You can create all of that stuff. It's too easy because none of this text was written in real time. Nobody was running around, hey, Moses, can you uh, say that one more time? Because I really want to get it right on this scripture that I'm writing that's going to be it's going to be held accountable by everything you said. I want to make sure I didn't miss a word. Can you say that one more time? Because I just didn't, the people over there that were making the golden lamb were making a little bit too much noise, and I just couldn't really hear what you were saying. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Are you for real? The text that's in all of these new age religions, new age, Christianity, Islam, you know, the whole thing about being Jewish and the whole uh, Hebrew faith and the Abrahamic faiths and all that, that's all New Age religion. All of it. None of it is ancient. Because I can get into ancient texts, which I do all the time, and I guarantee you it's tens of thousands of years older than these religions that exist nowadays that people are running and chopping each other's heads off for. They're killing each other over stuff written by human beings and then claiming it's in the name of God. It's the same old story. It doesn't matter who's doing it. It's the same old story. Same old story. We'll just write this stuff in here. Now we can do slavery in the name of God. Now we can take over your land in the name of God. Now we can be the chosen ones in the name of God. Everyone else is an infidel. You guys are, you're, you're pewter. You're nothing. All right. We're the ones that's going to get the glorious spot in heaven. There's even some text that talks about the fact that the chosen ones get to go to the inner sanctum of heaven. And then the ones who aren't really the chosen people, they kind of get a little bit of a pass and they kind of get to hang out, but they got to stay on the outer gates. They don't really get to come. This is all about division, separation, racism, especially racism. It's all about power, devicism, divide and conquer tactics. That's what all this stuff is all about. Resources, theft of funds, theft of property. That's what's really going on here. That's what's really going on. And then because it's spewed from the mouth of the mother and the father to the brand new baby, and then it's beat into them, like, this is what you are. This is what you're going to be. This is what you're going to do. Now, they just regurgitate the same old poison nonstop to the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. And everybody's looking for this justification from this fabricated God. Now, let me stop there for a minute. Many videos of me talking about these topics. And yet and still, I believe that God actually exists. Except the God that exists that created this universe and the multiverse is not written in any of those books I just mentioned a few minutes ago in, for those religions. Not in the Quran. Not in the Torah. Not in the Talmud. Not in the Bible. Not in the Sumerian tablets. Not in the Egyptian Book of the Dead, not in the Mahabharata, not in the Bhagavad Gita, not in the Indian Vedas, not in the Epic of Atrahasis, not in the Epic of Gilgamesh. I can go on and on and on. Not in the Code of Hammurabi, 
not in the myth of a DAPA. I can keep going. But guess what, guys? I'm one of the foremost world leader in the knowledge on ancient texts and tablets, scriptures, papyruses, and cylinder scrolls. And guess what? In all the ones I've gone through over thousands over the years, not one of them is speaking about the creator of the universe, which is real. I acknowledge that. Matter of fact, so did the Anunnaki. They claimed to know that they were going to get in trouble for what they did on this planet by the creator of all, which tells you that they knew they weren't the creator of all, that there was somebody even above them. An entity, an energy, a life force of something above them that had a say so. And they would have to find judgment one day. So they knew they weren't gods, even though they masqueraded as God. They became the gods of the Torah and the Talmud and the Bible and the Quran and all these texts. The Elohim, which means plural, gods with an S. It's interesting. You have the people of the Jewish faith, which originally begin in that same region and migrate down into Ethiopia, migrate through Egypt. They go through Egypt first, down into Ethiopia, which is in Africa. Egypt is in Africa, and so is Ethiopia. And they get down there, and they begin to build uh, temples and worship and, and, uh, and all that good stuff. Matter of fact, the people down there are jet black, blacker than this shirt I have on. Let me show you a picture of these Jews, well-documented Jews of Ethiopia. You know, they're real people. They, in my opinion, are the oldest version of the Jewish faith. They're so old that they weren't even aware of the Holocaust. They had discovered about the Holocaust not too many decades ago. They didn't even know it existed. These are the Jews. And if you go to Ethiopia, you can go to temple and you can see them worship and you can see them read from the Torah and you can see them speak in Hebrew and write in reverse and all that good stuff. Those are the Jews. Okay? Those are the Jews. And so I did a whole video on this a few months back, which talked about the story of the black Jews. Matter of fact, I may add that to this video. And it doesn't mean that I'm extra proud that they're black or anything like that. I'm just pointing out actual facts. This is an actual fact of life that can't be changed. It's a reality that can't be altered. As a matter of fact, when Moses left and uh, went down there, he actually married a black Ethiopian wife. This is in the Bible. This is, you can read the whole description right there. It tells you specifically exactly what happened there. Okay. And the reason why I bring this up is because it's so interesting that in the video I did, these same black Ethiopians have the hardest time getting access to Israel which is supposed to be this promised land, quote unquote. In that video, I have a woman who actually is in Israel that works in the government. And specifically, she's talking in my video about the hardest time she has getting, uh, attacking racism in a way to get it reduced and to stop it from happening. And that many people who finally do make it to Israel that are black, these black Jews, the original black Jews, are just uh, homeless. Some of them are even living in the streets, and they're uh, they're heavily, 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 um, um, I guess, oppressed there. And so she said it was a big challenge that she's trying to find a way to overcome, but she doesn't. She doesn't have a lot of help on that end, and so it's a lot. It's a lot of work, and she was a little overwhelmed. And that's an actual video that you can find right here on this Forbidden Knowledge podcast. 
And the point that I'm trying to make here is we have a strange situation here where people end up in this faith, claim it for their own, um, which is interesting. And then they go on this, this text that says they own all this land because it was given to them by God. It's pretty interesting. Now, when you analyze the land that was given to them by God from the biblical, from the uh, from the ancient text, or the uh, it's not really ancient, but the, you go into the, the the biblical text and Torah, is south and southwest of Lebanon mountains, north and east of Egypt, east of the Mediterranean coastal plain, west of the Arabian desert. And the land of Canaan was located in the southern Levant, which today includes Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza and Jordan, the southern, the southern parts of Syria and Lebanon. Now, if you look at the biblical part, which is the south and southwest of Lebanon and north and east, uh, north and east of Egypt, the east of the Mediterranean coastal plain, that's a much bigger piece of land. Like that's a massive swath of land that supposedly that they were promised a very long time ago. They believed in this promise so strongly that they decided to go there and just go to war against the people that lived there and take their land from them. <laughs> sound familiar? Does that sound familiar to you? Just go and just take it and claim it in the name of God. Pretty interesting. Sounds like what the Europeans did to a lot of continents on this planet. It's just a fact. I'm just spitting facts. I'm not getting emotional. I'm not uh, throwing in my own, you know, stuff into this. I'm not flaming any fires. I'm not trying to gaslight anybody. I'm giving you absolute verifiable facts that anyone can go learn in school right now. Okay? This isn't forbidden knowledge tonight. This is fact knowledge. And so they go there and they take it. Now, what's interesting is, initially... The people of Palestine were not wanting to have this, this situation happen. They wanted to keep their land. They wanted to continue to live in their houses and everything else outside of the Gaza Strip. They had more of that land, which is now Israel. Eventually, who gets involved? England, right? First, they used to answer to the Ottoman Empire. Then England gets involved. Okay, England, England is like, you know, the UK is like, hey, we're going to, we're going to have some interest in this thing and we're going to take over and then we're going to divide this into two states. And so, of course, the Palestinians weren't really with that because they had already settled. They already had houses and everything else, people and generations raised up in these lands and everything. And so they come over and they start buying up. The Jews come over and start buying up land, buying up houses, buying up farms. They start you know, they had already had been, you know, gone through a Holocaust. Everywhere they went, they were being, um, you know, attacked and oppressed and everything else you could think of. That's a whole nother podcast why that's happening. That's a whole nother podcast. I'm not going to do that on YouTube. It's a whole nother podcast why that's happening or why that happened. Um, and so... They said, well, we got to have a place of our own. So now we're going to fall back into these texts and we're going to claim that we have some promised land. So they get a little bit of land. They force Europe to give them a little bit of land. Right. So you got. Well, that's Kush and East Ethiopia. I just got done showing you that that's where the the black Jews actually inhabit that area. And that's where Moses went. He went to Kush. Uh, where he actually uh, met his wife. Let's go over here. So all of a sudden here, we have um, this land that they're now given. Now let's take a look at this land. Look at Israel, and then look at the Gaza Strip. Look at Israel, and then look at the Gaza Strip. Now the Gaza Strip is minuscule compared to the amount of land that Israel actually has. See, Israel did something interesting. See, they're business people, they're businessmen. So they negotiated a lot of deals with, com with countries, with the UN, with America. 
and they got some gre greased some palms. I guess that's part of the chosen land situation. They greased a few palms and they got more land. And then they pushed these people into this tiny little corner. Into this tiny little corner you see called the Gaza Strip. Now, let me pull this back down again. What happens in the hoods and the ghettos of America? I know because I lived in them. Why is there more crime per capita in the ghetto? Why is that? Why is there more crime per capita in the ghettos? Well, the reason is, is because you got everybody piled in on top of each other and they're fighting over resources. You think it's because black people want to attack black people and Spanish people want to attack black and Spanish people. And you think it's just we're just gangsters and thugs. No, there's a battle going on over resources. And when you're economically and financially oppressed. All of a sudden now, opportunities are taking away, taken away from you. The unemployment rate in Palestine is like 60 percent. Imagine living in a place where more than half the people don't even have jobs. More than half of the people don't even have jobs. And then imagine being piled up on top of one another. And then imagine seeing your oppressor who defeated you walking around your neighborhood with automatic rifles and doing military gun stops and checks 24 seven. Imagine snipers having guns pointed at your kids all the time when they're just trying to go outside and have fun and play. I remember about four years ago, my son, Justin was in the, I think he was in the 11th grade. Let me show you how deep this zealotism goes. I call it zealotism. His grandfather is a preacher. He's a preacher. He's a priest. Pastor. I'm sorry. He's a pastor, not a preacher. I guess the same thing. Preacher, pastor, same thing. And um, he goes to his grandfather and he tells him, says, hey, man, I just saw on the news that this kid playing soccer in Palestine just got shot by a sniper's rifle from an Israeli um, guard, which is a fact. It made international news. They did it. For, they shot the kid for fun. And uh, his grandfather told him, well, you know what? Kid deserved to die because he worships the wrong God. You see, you see what I'm talking about? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? This is the mindset of not only him, the grandfather, but of all these people running around in these third world countries and believing in these, these fairy tales and these fantasies. My God is better than your God. And by the way, God is always a man. Don't ever call God a woman. Never forget, won't he do it? He's always a man. He's always a gender. He's always got a magic wand too. So you better be careful of what you say and what you do because he's ready to zap you, All right? This is what we're going through. So they go and they buy up all these people's lands and they put, put them out on the street, force them into this little tiny corner and then wonder why they're angry. Why are these people so angry? Why are they so, it must be their religion. Are you guys cornered? You, when you take a dog and you put it into a corner and threaten it, the dog is going to bite you, man. Come on. This is basic psychology 101. This ain't no, come on, man. <laughs> this ain't rocket science. It's not rocket science. So you defeat them, and every so many years you hear there's an Arab uprising, and you defeat them again, and now you just got the boot on the neck. This situation between Israel and Palestine reminds me of Hunger Games. It's the modern-day Hunger Games. It's exactly what it is. It's the modern-day Hunger Games. No difference. Zero difference. When you take pleasure in trying to eradicate and destroy a people off of this planet on something that wasn't even yours to begin with, that's pretty dark. That's pretty damn dark. 
Let's take a look at something. This is just craziness. This is just, this whole thing, this whole thing is just ridiculous. And people say, why, why, how come you don't like religion? <laughs> come on, man. Do you see why I don't like religion? More people have died over religious beliefs than any other reason on the face of the planet. And then you got people like America, com countries like America, that's actually funding the war. They fund, they fund, they're funding the Ukrainian and Russian war. They're funding the Israeli war. Just getting in on it, finding out how they can make money, how they can get their stocks to go up. As soon as that thing happened, they were like, oh, yeah, it's money time. Hey, guys, uh, get Betty, Sue, and John and them to put some money on Apache. Uh, you know, we're going to drop, we're going to have to bring in the ships and everything. Every, any company we have that has any military prowess, go ahead and go ahead and do them. Uh, we're going to do the stock options on them. Go ahead and do some long calls because we're going to go ahead and now we're going to jump right on in. We're going to send some money. And guess what? When our, when our ships, when our Navy ships show up and when our military shows up and our helicopters show up, all of those stocks are going to spike. And we're going to make a few hundred million dollars in a few weeks because we know how to play the game. And then we're going to double dip because now we're going to charge the Americas, Americans tax dollar for the cost of showing up to this region and putting a show of force out here. That's what we're going to do. And now we're going to eat off of that, too. That's how it works. That's exactly how it works. It's a pimp game. It's an absolute outright pimp game. Whew. The book of Hebrews says that the promised land is a type of spiritual inheritance. The prophet land is also known as the land of Israel, the holy land, and the land of Canaan. The majority of Canaan is now part of modern Israel and Palestine. Many Christians in the Western world believe that Israel is the promised land. The Zionist movement promoted that mass Jewish immigration is what led to the proclamation of the Jewish state of Israel in 1948. That's when they forced Palestinians off of their land and pushed them into that little tiny strip of land. The Israelites occupied and conquered Palestine. Actually, back then, it was really called Canaan. So they conquered the Canaanites. Beginning in the late second millennium BCE, or even maybe a little bit earlier, I think. And the Bible justifies the occupation by identifying Canaan with the promised land and the promised land to the Israelites by God. That these are the chosen people. They're chosen by what? By who? By what? Chosen for what? That means that in religion, there's always going to be a group of people that's better than somebody else. There's always going to be a group of people that's better than somebody else. And that is divide and conquer. That's racism. That's divisiveness. And that's power and control and domination. Anytime I can look at you in your eye and tell you I'm better than you, I'm a chosen this and that by this most high, whatever. What you're saying is that the 8 billion people on the planet are trash and a few million of them are, are very special and they get all these special perks and they get to kill in the name of God and whatever, they can do whatever they want to do. That's what you're saying. It's a form of supremacy. And I'm against all forms of supremacy, black supremacy, white supremacy, religious supremacy, indigenous supremacy. I'm against all of it. All of it. There's no place for supremacy in a golden age. There's no place for chosen people in the golden age. There are no chosen people in the golden age because everybody's chosen. Everybody on the planet. Everybody is a chosen one. 
If you are listening to these people run around telling you that they're the chosen people and you then believe that you're not a chosen person, well, then shame on you. Because we're all chosen people. Because the divine spark that created everything in the universe is in every single atom and every single body of every single thing that exists on the entire planet and even within the entire universe. A cat has no less chosenness than anyone else on the planet. A rock has no less chosenness than anyone on the planet or anything in the universe even. A blade of grass has no less chosenness than any entity that considers himself to be a sentient being in the universe. A blade of grass, a rock. As a matter of fact, this microphone, which we think it's man-made, it's not a man-made device. This microphone is just stacked atoms like Legos because man can't make atoms. Atoms already existed since the beginning of the universe. So all we did was we cultivated a way to stack them into a format that allows us to have the illusion of being a microphone and give us some type of a technological tool use of it. But in true reality, when you find out at the base level how this microphone came into existence, we stacked atoms like Legos and then we say it's man-made. No, we didn't make this. We just stacked the atoms together in the right format. We unlock the code of these atoms to create something that can give us the ability to utilize it in a certain way. And guess what? The atoms inside this microphone, they're conscious. Every atom is conscious. If you look into quantum physics, into the double slit experiment, you discover that every atom has electrons orbiting it. And those electrons make conscious decisions to become a wave of potentials or a digital bit of information. So from the quantum field on up, we know that every single atom, because every atom has an electron or more, is conscious. That means that every single thing that exists in the entire universal matrix is conscious. Not just you because you think you've got this special body and you've got a brain and you got a spinal cord and nerve endings and all this kind of stuff. Everything is conscious. This water is conscious. This glass is conscious. You see? There's levels to understanding. There's levels to understanding. Somebody asks about the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson is the God particle. That God particle is a particle that gives other particles mass. It was discovered a few years ago. We're just learning more and more and more about the universe that we live in, and we still barely are touching the surface of what's really going on out there. So for anyone walking around going, I'm a chosen person, and there's a magic sky daddy with a wand granting me the power over these people and granting me to be able to slaughter these people in his name, in his name, it's always a man. Never forget, it's always a man. That's why this planet is run like a giant bachelor pad, because we always give toxic male energy. It's a fact. It's an absolute fact. When you go to those regions of the world, you see that women are heavily oppressed, and you see the absence of the divine feminine, and that's why those third world countries look like that. They look like that, not because they're third world. They look like that because there's no feminine input. There is no divine feminine. It's been wiped out. It's been oppressed. And so what you see there is a bachelor pad. Everything's one color. Everything's dirty, nasty, breaking down, garbage in the street, plastics all over the place. Just a mess. It's an absolute mess. Everything's turned to dust, blowing buildings up, blowing up people, blowing up, killing everything. That's the mindset of the chosen people. Of chosen. When you see it from my perspective, you find out it's something totally different. It's not I am chosen. It's 
This universe is chosen. It's the multiverse is chosen. And I'm happy to be a part of this. You see the difference? You see the pivot there in mindset? You see that pivot in mindset? Imagine if those people had that mindset, that pivot in their mind, realizing that, oh, it's not about me. It's about us. It's about us, not me. It's about the whole. It's about the macro, not the micro. I'm just playing a small role in a much bigger play. And all of it's divine, including me. Not I'm divine and I'm this and it's all about me. And I'm a, did somebody a, th a thousand years ago wrote, this is our land. And then put God's name at the end of the sentence so I can claim it. And I'm going to snatch this from you. And if you don't like it, I'll kill you and all your kids and children. And I'm going to dominate and I'm going to take it over. This is all ours. You get in that corner and you shut up and sit down. We beat you before we beat you again. And then get pissed off when they create groups like Hamas and, and, uh, and don't want to negotiate at the table when it's time to negotiate. There seems to be no end to this thing. A person that's truly divine and understands the true power within them and under can have a level of empathy that will give them the ability to cease and stop that situation that's going on right there. So from my perspective, I don't see any chosen people on either side. I just see people acting like programs in a matrix. I see soulless avatars operating on matrix programming code. That's what I see. When you go into the wars of the book of Deuteronomy, you find these same exact wars that is talked about giving people the power to take land, right? Take a quick journey with me. I'm going to pull up some something real quick because I think you guys need to read along with me. I haven't done this in a while, but I'm going to pull it up if you can just hang tight. And we're going to take a little journey, a little reading journey before I have to move on to my free webinar. I'm doing a free webinar tonight, okay? Doing a free webinar on finances tonight after this podcast. Let me share my screen. And let's have a little read of the book of Deuteronomy. Let's go for a little journey here. <clears throat> it's all here. I like this because it saves me a lot of time of having to pull the book out and read it all, but I can just go right through here real quick. I can find what I want. Kill people who don't listen to priests. Anyone arrogant enough to reject the verdict of the judge or of the priest who represents the Lord your God must be put to death. Such evil must be purged from Israel. Deuteronomy 17, 12. Kill them. Just kill them. You see where these people are getting their source of their understanding of what to do? They don't believe that Palestinians are worshiping the right God. They reject their faith. And so from their perspective, based on the teachings of what they go by, because remember, they don't go by the New Testament of the Bible because they don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. I don't either. So we're on the same side there. I think he's a phenomenal teacher that came to bring a level of consciousness to the planet, but I don't think he's any savior of mankind. He just came to bring us the wisdom and information. Any arrogant, anyone arrogant enough to reject the verdict of the judge, the judge says, this is your promised land. If you reject that, if you're like, nah, this is our land, well, you must be put to death. You see? You see the mind, you see where the mindset comes from? 
kill homosexuals. If a man lies with a man as a woman, both of them shall be put to death. Kill fortune tellers. I better not be able to tell the if I if I have a prediction that the crops are going to be a great harvest next year, I might be killed. I got to play dumb. Death for adultery, death for fornication, death to followers of other religions, so death to followers of other religions. Whoever sacrifices to any God except the Lord alone shall be doomed. Kill non-believers. They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, with all their heart and soul. And everyone who would not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, was to be put to death, whether, shall, whether small or great, whether man or woman. That's Chronicles 15, 12 through 13. I got the receipts. There's nothing anyone can say. This is where the mindset comes from. Kill false prophets. If a man still prophesies, his parents, father, and mother shall say to him, you shall not live because you have spoken a lie in the name of the Lord. When he prophesies, his parents, father, and mother shall thrust him. You get your own mother and daddy got to slice you open and gullet and gull you in front of everybody. Kill the entire town. If one person worships another God, you see what's happening to Palestine? Suppose you hear one of the towns the Lord your God is giving to you that some worthless rabble among you have led their fellow citizens astray by encouraging them to worship foreign gods. In such cases, you must examine the facts carefully. If you find that it's true and can prove that such a detestable act has occurred among you, you must attack the town and completely destroy all of its inhabitants, as well as the livestock. Then you must pile all the plunder in the middle of the street and burn it. I'm just bringing you the facts. That's Deuteronomy 13, 13 through 9, 19. I'm just giving you guys the facts. I mean, do you understand the mindset now? <laughs> do you understand the, psycho the level of psychosis that exists from generation to generation to generation to generation? That information I just read you was just a small fraction of how deadly this information is. It even says in there, if you see a woman walking across the field, you can rape her. That's in the book of Deuteronomy. And if you decide to, well, you can also make her your wife if you want to keep her. It's up to you. It's in the book of Deuteronomy. But do you see the mindset? Do you see that they're saying that this is all by order of the creator of the universe? Now, do you really believe that the creator of the universe has ordained this type of behavior? Or do you believe it's really a flesh and blood man that wrote this in order to put his boot on someone else's neck? in order to give the green light for murders and killings and plundering and stealing and raping and everything else. Keep it real. That's really what it comes down to. And then you got people running around saying, I'm proud of this. I'm chosen for this. This is, this is my stuff. This is all me right here. This way, this, this is, this is, this is what it's all about. I'm in this. I wouldn't want to touch that Bible or that Torah with a 10 foot pole. I don't want to claim none of that slavery, none of the rape, none of the murder, none of the killing, none of the stealing of land, none of the plundering, none of it. I don't want that nowhere near me. That's bad karma. Bad karma. And the karma is evident. You just got to look at the history of what's happened. The karma is ongoing and evident. So, at the end of the day, what side are you going to be on? I'm not on the side of Israel or the Palestinians. I'm on the side of love. I'm on the side of empathy. I'm on the side of truth. I'm on the side of freedom. That's the side I'm on. I'm on the side of humanity. 
The first time somebody runs up on you and starts telling you that they're this and they're that and they're chosen for this and they're chosen for that and I'm this and I'm that. Run as fast as you can in the other direction. And I mean run. Because it's poison. It's crazy. I've been all around this world. Last year, I traveled the world, 11 countries, 259 cities, six months in hotels. I've seen everything. I've seen kids five and six years old working a 40-hour hard labor job of a grown man. The grown men here in America wouldn't even do that work. They couldn't stand day. They couldn't do a day's work of what a six and seven-year-old can do where I've been. The hardest gangsters, the hardest bloods and crips in the world, the biggest, strongest killer in Chicago couldn't stand a week in Abydos with no gun and no money. They couldn't last a week. They wouldn't last a week. The babies would destroy them. The babies. Toddlers. There's a lot going on out here on these streets. Stuff that people can't even imagine, but they don't know because they don't travel. Most people don't even leave their zip code, yet alone go around the world and venture into these places that I've been to. At the end of the day, what do I see? What do I learn? I learned that the majority of people really just want to live and find a way to survive. The majority of people just want to be loved and loved back. But then we have the zealots. And the zealots always find a way to rise above to power using control and domination. And these books, these new age religions, to direct the people in the way in which they want them to go so they can not only keep the boot on their neck, but they can financially make money off of them. And then, of course, push people into areas and regions and locations where they can gain even further and more control. But at the end of the day, the majority of the people, they don't even want that. They just want to be loved and be happy. They just want uh, a certain level of security for their family. But because human beings, the majority of us are just sheep. So we just like a flock. And we get herded left and we get herded right. We get herded up and we get herded down. At the end of the day, it's really still all of our faults because we are in collusion with the same ones that are injuring us mentally, physically, financially, spiritually, because we keep participating in their games. At the end of the day, we all have to look in the mirror and say, it's us. At the end of the day, there's always more people dominating in terms of human bodies that has the ability to dominate an area versus the amount of people that actually rule over them. And that includes the military and the police. At some point, somebody has to say enough is enough. At some, at some point, somebody has to say, you know what? I got to stand for something. I'm not going to go out like this. God has made a unique declaration regarding the land of Israel in Leviticus 25, 23. The land is the Lord's land. And it is his to assign and dispose of. Now, do you think the creator of the universe wrote that? Do you really think... <laughs> Come on now. Ask yourself a solid question. Do you think God was just like, you know what? Hold on a second. Somewhere in the second or third quadrant of this galaxy over here, Milky Way, there's a little blue dot. There's tiny ants on there called people. And you know what? There's a piece of land. Oh, let me fly over there real quick and give these people some promised land.
That's just like people praying to win a football game, people praying to win a war. There's nobody in space floating around with a magic wand saying, you know what? I think I think James need to win this dog on his team need to win this game because I know he got ten dollars on this game this weekend. His team need to win this game. Ching. Jack is over here fighting this war. You know what? Let me give him a little power because I need him to slaughter another couple hundred people this weekend. He, he, he earned it. He earned the slaughter. Let me ching. <laughs> Come on. Man. This is 21st century and people are still believing in this foolishness. What the hell is going on here? I see people praying for the most outrageous things. This is my land. I'm praying for the game. I got to pray to win this war. Do you think the creator of a multiverse has the time, the energy, and the wherewithal to even step in and say, you know what? Let me take a break from creating another 100 million universes this week because I really want to take care of Sally and make sure that her husband kills enough people in this war so he can make it back home for Christmas. Come on. You believe that foolishness? It's foolishness. And when you listen to me say it, you know it sound dumb. You know it's ridiculous. But that's exactly what people do every single day. And they believe it. They wholeheartedly believe it with all their heart and might. There's people praying right now on the battleground. Help me slaughter my enemies. And they really believe that there's a magic guy, a god out there with a magic wand getting ready to help them kill some people. Are you kidding me? You're damn right, Civlop. You have better luck with a rabbit's foot. You're damn right. Come on, man. We got to stop. The Torah is full of fairy tales. The fairy tales and, and man-made additions and remixes. It originates from the Enuma Elish, mostly. The Epic of Gilgamesh. Some of the Sumerian cylinder scrolls, those parts are really historical parts. And then you have the, the remix that happens in there with a whole lot of added on things that just are completely contradictory that don't make any damn sense whatsoever. And you got people beating their chest. I'm a chosen one. We have to really evaluate what we're doing as a species on this planet. We have to really evaluate what we're believing in wholeheartedly down to every vibration of every cell in our body. We have to begin to evaluate how we're treating other people. We have to begin to evaluate our level of empathy or lack of empathy. At the end of the day, no one is better than anyone else. In the Jehovah Witness religion, they believe that only 144,000 chosen ones are gonna go to paradise. They don't call it heaven, they call it paradise in Jehovah Witness. With a Bible that was just made not, only, not too many decades ago, re, a remixed Bible, only 144,000, but they're the chosen ones. I said, well, why are you knocking on my door if only 144,000 people are going, why are you knocking on my door? You should be keeping this a secret so you can be one of the ones that gets in. So you mean to tell me out of 8 billion people, only 144,000, less than one-tenth of 1% 1 of the people on the planet are going to make it into this paradise and you're trying to sell it like a salesman door to door? Are you kidding me? I ain't saying nothing to nobody. It's going to be the best kept secret. I'm going to my grave with that secret. No, it's foolishness. That's why they do it. It's all fabrications and foolishness. They don't even know who Charles Taze Russell is. It's the actual lady. Who's Charles Taze Russell? She didn't even know the answer to that question. I <laughs> said, the guy who started Jehovah Witness, Jesus. You don't even know the name of the guy that gave you this religion. Oh, my goodness. You got to be kidding me. 
But they believe in this stuff. They believe in the fairy tales wholeheartedly. Hook, line, and sinker. Got them. We have to stop doing dumb stuff on this planet. And I mean dumb. There's abundance for everyone. There's enough for everyone. There's enough land on this planet for everyone. The planet is not overpopulated. Stop listening to the news. There is no overpopulation. It doesn't exist. Our coastal areas overpopulated only because of our construction technique. If you had a different type of construction technique, a green type of construction like the Venus Project, that would not even feel overcrowded. But more in all the inland areas across this vast planet, and this, this planet is huge. It took me 38 hours to fly to Cambodia. Imagine that. Imagine flying for 38 hours to get to a location. Think about that for a minute. At 550 to 600 miles per hour, and it still took me 38 hours. You understand what I'm saying? This planet is huge. It's massive. There's land everywhere. I've seen it. Hell, there's land in Colorado. Colorado's vast open areas of land everywhere you look. There's so much land. There's so much guaranteed abundance here. And they got people living on tiny swaths of land fighting over resources as if there's nothing left and there's nowhere else to go. That's power control and domination. That's what that is. By a small group of people that want to sit on top of the pyramid and look down on everybody, everyone and keep their bellies fat. If you make a new rule, a new global rule, which of course it would never happen, but it's hypothetical, I'm going to tell you anyway. And you say that all of the leaders that exist on this planet, the high level politicians and the presidents and the kings and the rulers, if you want to go to war against somebody, then you and your family members have to be on the front line first. First, you're first. You're not last. You're not sitting in a $10,000 $10,000 suit in the office looking at a screen, a crystal screen to see what's going down, calling shots from underneath the bunk or somewhere. No, you're on the front line with a weapon in your hand. And so are your kids and your daughters and your sons and your grandkids. There won't be any more wars. Why? Because those guys don't want to fight. They want to send the chattel out to fight. They want to send expendables out to fight. And they don't give a damn about those people that go out there, these kids that go out there and kill themselves for these rich people. They can care two craps about these people. Oh, they'll have a little TV thing and they'll say a little ceremony and fold up some flags and put them on a casket, dump it in the ground. Do you think they really give two craps about them people? They're just chattel. Collateral damage. They mean nothing. This planet won't turn around until these militaries of the world wake the hell up and stop taking orders from $10,000 suits to go and kill their brother and their sister for nothing, for profit. The whole thing about Gaza is really about a land grab and a money grab. Now you got people going over there. This is before this even war even broke out and literally kicking people out of their own houses, putting them on the street in the area where they're supposed to live. And then wondering, why are, they, why are they getting mad all the time? Why are they got attitudes? The same thing that happened to the Jews during the Holocaust, they're now doing the same thing to other people. It's a fact. It's not a mystery. It's not. It's the same thing that happened. It's being replicated now on other people. And the name, uh, the name of God is being used to justify the whole thing. It's a travesty. Anyway, guys, 
I got to hop on this live webinar. We're doing a live webinar tonight. I'm going to go off. I'm coming right back with Gaben Sarial. And we're going to do a free webinar tonight on financial literacy, on crypto, and how you can become your own bank. All right. It's going to be an amazing webinar. And before I hop off here, I want you guys to check something out, something amazing. Don't forget that we are in round three of raising capital for forbidden knowledge. And it's a, a great opportunity for people to get involved and become a partner with us. So if you want to learn about becoming a partner with forbidden knowledge, make sure that you go to forbiddenknowledge.com and click on invest or the link is in the caption of this video and check this out. Hey everyone, it's Billy Carson here, AKA Forbidden Knowledge. If you've ever wanted to invest in a company that's going places, you need to take a look at us. Remember in round one, shares were only a dollar each as our pre-money valuation came in at $20 million. Not bad for a startup, right? We did phenomenal numbers months later where our pre-money valuation went up to $30 million and share prices went up to $1.50, looking really good for the investors. And our pre-money valuation is now $50 million as we've continued to grow and expand the company. Share prices have gone up again to $2.50. If you've ever wanted to get involved with a company that's going places, that's building, that's growing and expanding, if you ever wanted to earn and learn, you should look at Forbidden Knowledge. Make sure you click the link, read up on all the information about us to make an educated decision to join the Forbidden Knowledge family today. Hey everyone, it's Billy Carson here, aka Forbidden. All right, that was looping back. Anyway, I'm gonna sign off tonight. If you want more information, make sure you click the link I just dropped in the live chat or in the caption of this video. I'll be back on to talk about uh, making money uh, and funding liquidity pools, becoming your own bank. And I'll be coming back on here shortly with Gaben Sarial. Make sure you check out and look out for that notification because I'll be right back. Peace. <laughs>